Okay, so today's story is number 35, Misunderstanding. Few who serve as houseboys to great men have ever risen to greatness themselves. That is because they encounter a procession of people who come to the door inquiring differentially to see the master of the house and mistakenly assume that the politeness is directed at them. They become arrogant and conceited, look down on others, and in the end are cast aside by all. Let's read it again. Misunderstanding. Few who serve as houseboys to great men have ever risen to greatness themselves. That is because they encounter a procession of people who come to the door inquiring differentially to see the master of the house and mistakenly assume that the politeness is directed at them. They become arrogant and conceited, look down on others, and in the end are cast aside by all. Okay, very good. Um, yeah, especially in the past, uh, like people of power or wealth, they had, you know, houseboys or servants, um, aides, assistants, and uh, who were helping in the house. And yeah, however, because this um, person, the politician, uh, he or she has great prominence. So a lot of people come to the door and uh, respectfully asking to see the master of the house. They show so much respect and reverence um, at the door that whoever opens the door, who is like the assistant or the houseboy, there they think that all this respect is directed to at them. This is a misunderstanding. <laughs> All the respect and politeness is actually, it's because they're in front of that prominent politician, a good politician that a lot of people have respect for. So then these assistants, the aides to the politician or um, the houseboys um, uh, attendants, they become arrogant and conceited thinking that, oh, I must be such a valuable or such an important person. Then little by little, they look down on other people. And, you know, every time we look down on others, um, we get abandoned. We get cast aside by them. You know, nobody likes to be looked down upon. It's a very painful feeling at work or somewhere. If we know our partner, uh, these days even children, look down on parents. Um, yeah, if we feel that we are being looked down upon, it really hurts. Yeah, so people move away from whoever is looking down on them. And it brings a lot of suffering, obviously, isolation and suffering. So it's important for us if we apply this to our everyday life too. So, uh, you know, a lot of people who teach Buddhism, uh, Buddhism, the Dharma, has such a healing power, it removes the suffering of people when people listen to it and practice it. And uh, so a lot of the Buddhist teachers, um, we, we have to be very mindful not to become arrogant and conceited, thinking that, oh, people come to me to learn the Dharma. So it's not something that I own. Um, yeah, Dharma is not something that we own. So we don't need to become arrogant and conceited, and even worse, to look down on people. That's horrible. So that's how we practice it. So at workplace or outside, you know, the more we practice Dharma, Dharma is like reflecting the light of the Buddha through us. So... Uh, conveying the light of the Buddha through us, and people get attracted to that light of our serenity or or uh, fulfillment of being alive. So it's not us, it's the light of the Buddha through us. So we don't need to become arrogant and conceited, and we need to have it in check. 
Otherwise, we might alienate our friends or family members and they will uh, move away. That's not fun. <laughs> yeah, so good job everyone for being here, practicing together. Today's Wednesday, we're going to have the Karma Lab. Yesterday, we had our monthly Q&A. It was very fulfilling, rewarding for our YouTube channel uh, members. And yeah, so have a wonderful Wednesday. Okay, bye.